when I saw the glow on his face, and I, I guess mine too, I did, couldn't see me, but I could feel me, and my God, those beavers, it just set me on fire. And he, he was enjoying the flame, you know, it was, it was real. Richard um, and I were uh, were co-authors on it, and they were basically it was basically a paper that covered the redistribution of uh, some mammal species around around the area. And what that paper did is is it did uh, discuss how beaver how a beaver carcass was found. Um, over at Mackenzie Park, that that started that whole, you know, my my obsession with with finding them. I mean, they might take down a um, hundred trees, you know, in order to feed their family for uh, that year. Above is a roost of black-crowned night herons. As we approach, um, they're going to give a, a loud squawk, an alarm call, and fly off. It's a big guy. And there they all go. You see them all? Spots. There's that one we just were under the, uh, the other side, and then there's one in the middle that I'm not. This is another one of the big spots um, where I saw they were being really active. And when I first found this this willow, um, it was still it was still barked. You know, the beaver was sitting right here with his hind legs like this, and you know had his mouth about right there. Um, so it gives you a, a good estimate. I mean, they can, including their tail, they can reach, you know, about four feet. Garrett started saying, Phil, I think there's some beavers out there. I said, oh, hell, that can't be. <laughs> I, I just, I just lost it. I, folks, I remember the day Garrett brought me down here the first time. And my God, all this was fresh then, Garrett. Oh, it yes, was sir. just, I said, oh, my God. There are beavers here, you know. It's just absolutely amazing. Well, that was like a defining moment for you. It was. It was because there are no beavers. Not out here. But, yeah. God, it Dude, was really great to see. They've been here for 5,000 years. <laughs> you know, they, were, they weren't supposed to be here. I, I was so amazed. <laughs> so, so, it was true. So then, you know, why did you not think that it was a nutria? Because of the tail drag. Because the tail drag was one thing. I ne We need to discuss the beaver because... Uh, I'm not sure I believe it. I had my doubts and it, ne it, it, never, it never felt right to me. It never settled. And so I, I had to know. For all of us, this, was, this is just because we love doing this. This is, this is a side project for all of us. Uh, no grant is attached to this. No bill was paid with this. I come out here on the weekends in my own vehicle with my own gas. Um, I borrowed the cameras from Phil. Um, it, you know, this, we, we just did this because we love it, you know, and I was obsessed with knowing. When I met him a few years back, it was obvious he was a scholar and a sharp guy. But I saw this as evidence that he was really becoming a naturalist of the old school. And we don't teach that anymore, Richard, right, and it's don't. a terrible, terrible shame. But when I saw you the glow go on, you, you gotta go, go outside, outside you have to live it. It becomes, it becomes your life, a big part of it. I think one of the highest compliments I can pay to this guy is that I think he really is becoming a naturalist, a true naturalist. And that takes time, it, takes a big, it becomes a part of who you are, not just what you are as a biologist.